applause and thank you for the very nice introduction. So Factory Springboard, um, it's really good to be here. Uh, I, um, again, Stephanie Pereira, I'm the director of the art program at Kickstarter. We are based in New York City. I have the pleasure of traveling around the country and coming to events like this and talking to people about what we do, among my other sort of responsibilities. Um, Minneapolis, uh, St. Paul, incredibly creative region. I'm really, um, it's been fun uh, in the lead up to this event, looking through existing projects on the website that are coming from this area, and it's clearly a lot of good stuff is happening here. So it's, I hope good things happen out of tonight. Um, so we have a we have a thing going on. <laughs> um, so Kickstarter. Kickstarter is a platform for funding creative projects, right? Creative projects. Um, things that are specific and finite. So a Kickstarter project, um, again, it's a creative project, it is specific and finite, but it also it includes rewards. So in exchange for a pledge that someone gives to your project, you give them a reward in an exchange for that pledge. That reward should benefit you, the creators, as well as them, the, what we call the backers of your project. This is two-way exchange of value. It's really important to know that about Kickstarter. Uh, so re another really important thing to know about Kickstarter is that the funding is all or nothing. So when you create a project on Kickstarter, um, you set a goal and a period of time to reach that goal within, usually about 30 days or so. So in this example, which is to put on a 24-hour cycle of waiting for Godot, they have $575 to raise with just 10 hours to go. If they did not hit that, that goal within that 10 hours, nobody who pledged their project is charged. Everyone walks away. It's like nothing ever happened. Um, of course, this project did make it, and they always do when they get to this point. So that's, that's good news. So a little bit about us. We were founded three years ago in April 2009, and since then we've seen some pretty exciting successes. To date, uh, $150 million has been pledged by 1.5 million people to over 50,000 projects. Over three million, no, approximately <laughs> three million dollars comes through our site each week. A little less than half of all projects succeed, and of those 1.5 million project backers, almost 300,000 of them are what we call repeat backers, or people that have pledged money to more than one project. So we're really excited because we see a, a creative, uh, creative ecosystem emerging on our site of people make, not only making projects but in getting involved in other people's work. Uh, of course, an important thing to know is that Kickstarter charges a 5% fee, but only on successful projects. So only if you hit your goal, Kickstarter will charge you a fee. And then Amazon, they are like our bankers, so they'll charge a finance fee of between 3 and 5%. Uh, something really cool that we have seen is that when a project gets to just 30% of its funding goal, it will succeed over 90% of the time. This is a historic statistic, but it holds pretty much true. Uh, so what that says to us is that once a project has a core audience, it has momentum, people believe in it, you believe in it, your backers believe in it, it, it likely will get there, it likely will happen. So um, that's some facts and figures, and we'll get more into it, of course, but I think that the most important thing to know is that every uh, Kickstarter is a story. Uh, Kickstarter is very much a storytelling platform. People come to the site to... Um, share stories, to learn about new projects, to get um, involved in people's ideas and their passion. It's really, really key to keep that in mind if you're working on your own Kickstarter project. So um, I hope you guys know this. The first thing that greets you when you land on a project page is the project video, right? So you click on the page and there's a video. The video is usually a person, um, like myself, uh, sharing an idea that they have, saying, hello, my name is Stephanie, I have this idea, and then saying why they're passionate about it, why, why it's exciting, why it matters. And then, of course, how people can get involved, what their participation will mean. Um, so, for our two-year anniversary last year, we put together a montage of our favorite Kickstarter project videos. Um, and we assembled them in such a way that follows the arc of a traditional Kickstarter video. So hopefully this will show you sort of how that plays out.
seen that video about a thousand times now. Um, I smile every time, I laugh every time. I think that it is, I hope your biggest takeaway here, it's a lot of faces, it's a lot of smiling people, maybe being slightly awkward, maybe being a little humorous. Um, some people are intimidated by this idea of doing a project video, but really it is not necessarily about fancy editing. Of course, you can get creative with it, and people did, but really it is about this human connection, about putting yourself in front of a camera and sharing your story. You can use whatever technology you have available to you. I would recommend, though, you do it in good lighting and with good sound so people can connect, <laughs> um, but really you don't need to be so fancy. So another way you get to tell your story through Kickstarter is through the rewards. As I said earlier, rewards are a required part of every Kickstarter project. And this is a way that when people pledge money, they get something in exchange for their pledge. So something that people really sweat over is what to set their funding goal at, right? How much money do I ask for? And this is a big deal. A lot of the uh, projects you see in the news, the bigger sort of higher profile projects are 25,000, 50,000, 100,000, and even most recently, million dollar projects. And that's exciting and we're excited about that. But uh, I would advise you not to think about that when you're setting your goal. The really, really important thing to keep in mind, of course, is that you can always raise more than your goal, but never less because of our all or nothing funding model. So you really want to pick a goal that is achievable for you and that makes sense with the project that you are trying to achieve. So um, the average goal of a successful project on Kickstarter is in fact just $4,500. People statistically do get overfunded, something like 130%, so it would work out to $6,100 in this case. This, this really um, tall green bar right here, that represents successful projects in the one to $5,000 range. So that's really, that's almost half of all the projects on the site. That's where most of the energy is happening. This bar here is the five to $10,000 range. So if you work your way that way, that's two thirds of all the projects on the site. This is really where people are making work and finding success. So um, as you know, we are continuously advising people and trying to help them figure out how do you find success, uh, we, we noticed something. We noticed that the average number of backers on a Kickstarter project is 86. And if you multiply that by 71, which is, a, as I said earlier, the average pledge amount, you get to $6,100, which again, as I said earlier, is the average funding amount. So we're like, maybe we have a bit of a formula here. So we maybe something you could do is multiply the number of people you think would support your project by that average pledge amount and get to your total. An important thing there, if that total is way less than you need to realize your project, I think you could do one of two things. You could either, or you could do both. <laughs> you can think about how to scope your project. Maybe, um, for example, film. Film budgets are often ginormous, right? You would maybe just pick a piece of your project. Maybe you're just really raising money for the soundtrack of your film, or for post-production or distribution, just a piece of it. Uh, the other thing you can do, or and do, is think about how to increase that number of backers. So we'll talk about those backers and where they come from in a minute, but really think about how do you get the word out even further than just your immediate reach? How do you maybe get some press coverage? Maybe you do an event so friends are telling friends. How do you just increase the number of those backers? So let's look at who these people are. Um, the majority of them, 75% of them on average, but even more, I'd say, um, are people within your own so social network. So they're your friends and your family. They're your Facebook friends. They're your Twitter followers. They're, maybe if you're on Tumblr, they're the people that follow you on Tumblr. Um, maybe if you are you have your own little press engine going through press releases or maybe local press, people who are regularly reading about you and know about you. That is the majority of people who will fund and support your project because that's the majority of people who are going to see it and know about it and understand your story. It's not until a project looks like it's going to succeed that and has real momentum that the other people come in. And those people might be friends of friends. That might be a bigger press story. That might be, of course, those repeat backers I mentioned earlier. So it's really your immediate, those 75%, those are the people you really want to focus on when you're working on your campaign. So now you have these people. They've given you $5. They've given you $50. They really care about your project. They're excited. I mean, I don't know. How many people in this room have backed a project on Kickstarter out of curiosity? Awesome, that's excellent. So as you guys know, um, once you've supported a project, you care about it, right? You want to like know what's going on, you want to see what's happening. Um, so built into every project page is something we call project updates. It's basically like a blog, right? So a project creator can go in and say, hey guys, today we went out on uh, our movie set and we had the first day of shooting and it was incredible and we did all these things and blah, 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 that's cool. You could also say we went into the studio today and we started to record and just realized 
it's a disaster. We have all the wrong people in the room and we need to actually rethink it. And that's okay too. Your backers are really kind of willing to go with you along on that creative process journey um, as long as you stay in touch with them and keep them in the loop. And they're in fact excited to hear that. And it happens, you know, not infrequently. The other thing, of course, you can share through project updates. People want to know where their stuff is, right? So I love this image. Um, two women in Brooklyn edited a book. It was wildly successful and they had this moment when they had packaged up all the books um, one evening and they had like I think over 500 books in their tiny Brooklyn kitchen and they were just like holy cow we did this and the first thing they did was take this picture and email it to all their backers through a project update and just to say guys this is coming it's happening we did this together really really powerful stuff so to illustrate that point um, this was a video that was sent out through a project update um, it, it went a bit viral people really responded to it and loved it so I hope you guys see guys whose project got a little bigger than they anticipated. <laughs> um, they sat down, they had to spend quite a bit of time packaging up their stuff, but they took the time to record that in a really nice way and send it out to their backers. So I think, again, illustrating this idea that every Kickstarter is a story. Kickstarter is an incredible storytelling platform and it's an opportunity for you to really engage with people who are excited about your ideas. So um, I want to share a case study with you, maybe to take some of these big ideas that in principle maybe sound interesting but you want to see them in real life. So this is a project called the Especially Mysterious Letter. It's, it's a, a bit of a conceptual art project by two artists named Lenka and Michael. This was actually their second successful Kickstarter project. Um, and I think it was the third time they ran this iteration of their project. Basically what they want to do is to write a handwritten letter in, um, to everyone in the world, one village at a time. Um, it's quite a sweet idea. And uh, I really love showing this project to people because I think they did an incredible job of keeping the sweetness and the spirit and the playfulness of their creative project very much alive and in place as they were thinking about how to do a Kickstarter project. They did not build a fundraiser on top of their creative project. They brought their creative project to the platform. So let's look at their video. The artists say their goal is to write to everyone in the world, starting next with a community where English isn't the first language. If you'd like to see some of these unusual... My heart can like this from a bad voice. As dangerous underground artists, we have to remain in Behind trips, behind trips. Mask behind masks, behind masks. We don't give the game away with reckless voice on the phone interview earlier in this film, but whatever. <laughs> to help us and get involved. We need to gather funds for lots of stamps, research, travel, ink, stationery, and so on. We have to remain quite mysterious about exactly what's next, the location, the people involved, etc. But rest assured, this next stage will be jaw droppingly, heart achingly lovely. Here you see all of the letters we've done so far. Hopefully, them flashing by like this won't cost any of you to have an epileptic <laughs> If you are having any sort of flash induced effect right now, we hope you'll still take a moment to take a look at them. Yeah, so I just want to really quickly look at the big stats. 
So they, they wanted to raise $2,000. I believe they ran this project for 60 days. They did that over Christmas, which um, is a terrible time to raise money, in my opinion, so they probably did the right thing in that case. Um, we recommend 30 days. Uh, so they were trying to raise $2,000. They got to almost 200% funding. They had 122 backers. So I think that speaks, I mean, it's their video, obviously, is incredible. I mean, who would not want to be part of this project? But as we'll take a look deeper into their rewards and how they structured it, you can see, I think, you, uh, how they got so much support. So going forward again. Yeah, thank you. Um, so let's look at their rewards. So one thing I think they did really well is figuring out how even at the very, the $10, you're just like sort of the bottom levels to get people involved and have people feel that they're participating. So for $10, you could suggest the theme, right, um, in one of the letters, which is pretty cool. So you get to, you're part of the story already. At $15, your name will be mentioned in one of the letters, which I also is really cool. You will also get a digital scan of your letter. So something like this, and you can see, and you saw that in the video, they um, do a beautiful job scanning their letters. They look really nice, so to get your letter in this form would be actually quite exciting. And then for $20, already just at $20, you're getting something in the mail. You're getting a, an actual physical artifact from this project, and it's a postcard. So that's something that's cheap to make and cheap to send, um, and they've promised one thunderbolting sentence proving that brevity is the soul of wit. So it's just this like very sweet, simple promise to send to somebody. Um, if working our way up, something that Lenko and Michael did on this project, when they launched, they had something like uh, seven or eight reward tiers. And then about halfway through to sort of motivate people, they hit their goal pretty early on, so they wanted to motivate people to keep pledging. So they added about four or five new ones. So when they launched, they had this um, $25 reward which says um, you will receive a unique hand-scrawled post hand postcard made and written while we were drunk, which we'll regret hardly by the time it arrives, <laughs> um, which is great. But so when they added a new reward, they said for 24, you will receive a unique handwritten, handmade postcard comp composed whilst we were sober, clear-headed, and utterly focused on the task. So it was kind of the mirror, the mirror reward. So I, you know, really nice to point out here the way that they're even playing with these rewards and being just as this sort of spirit of their project is really coming through. Um, this this image here is the example of a postcard raft a coworker of mine got in the mail in exchange for backing this project. So it says, Dear Kendall, I made this raft postcard with you in mind. Each knot was tied with concentrated deliberation. In theory, you could load it up with all your worries and watch it float off. Love, Lenka and Michael. Um, Kendall has this framed in her house. She says it's her most treasured belonging. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, I think it's pretty awesome. Um, I want to point out something. You can offer limited rewards on Kickstarter. So for $38, they promise to one person the following. Um, pledge $38 and receive a spooky gothic letter written in the graveyard, guaranteed blood-curdling, semi-cutesy terror. <laughs> Which, one thing I love about this reward, the fact that they were willing to do it once. They're like, listen, we'll go to a graveyard, we're going to write you a letter, but that's it. We can't do it more than that. It's just too creepy. <laughs> I, I like thinking about how they came up with that. So, um, so then looking at their higher pledges, they, one thing that Lenka and Michael wanted to do with this project, and I think it's obvious with all their scanning that they're doing, they want to make a book, right? So something that they did really well with their rewards, things they're sending out are things that are accomplishing their goal. They are, in each rewards here, they're sent either informing one of the letters they want to write, or they're sending someone a handwritten letter, so it's another person they can check off their list. Um, they also want to write a book, so they're offering people can pledge a certain amount of money and get a copy of that book. So they're not adding extra things on top of the creative project they're trying to achieve. Their rewards are all sort of part of this, this big story that they have. Um, I want to read the $80 pledge, because it's going to come up later. Pledge $80, and you'll be sent a buried treasure, uh, treasure map, of which there will only be one copy. We will bury a unique, fabulous, weird item and a letter in the ground. Only you will know its whereabouts. Excellent excuse for a holiday. Mm -hmm. So pretty, pretty fantastic. And that was an unlimited reward. So an unlimited reward to get a treasure map. So, so let's look at how this was played out. Um, quite a number of people, and I will highlight this, despite all their low pledges, quite a number of people did choose no reward, which means that they're like, you know, we love this project. We don't necessarily need a piece of that, but we want to support you because we think it's an incredible idea and we want to come along for that journey. Um, their average pledge was lower than the site-wide average, and I think it's because they offered so many of these um, lower-tier um, pledges. They did have 13 in the end. Most of them were under $25, and I think they offered, they, they knew. They were like, we are poor artists, our friends are all poor artists, so how do we, you know, make sure that our network, who are made up of poor artists, 
um, can support us and get behind this project. Um, so let's look at the timeline. So a cool thing about Kickstarter is when you make a project, you get a, a dashboard. So you get to see how much people are pledging and when and why and where their pledges are coming from. So you get a whole bunch of statistics. One of the things you get to see is this day-by-day -day timeline. So every day a new dot is added. So this is actually the perfect timeline to show you. This is really, really typical. When you launch a project, you're going to see a big uptick. This is because you're, you're sending it out to everyone you know. They're checking it out. They're telling their friends. They're pledging. This is when a lot of activity is happening. In their case, they even hit their funding goal almost right away. Then you're going to see this kind of quiet period in the middle. Maybe no pledges or just one or two each day. Not a lot of activity. And then on the final week, as your deadline is approaching, whether maybe you haven't hit your goal or maybe you've sort of informally said, wouldn't it be cool if we hit 200%, um, that's when you're going to see another uptick. So they're going to have something like 45 <coughs> pledges per day in the beginning and again at the end. So this is, this, this is really, really typical. Something we've seen is that when someone extends the, period of the length of their project, you're really just extending this middle period, this trough period. So if you run a 30-day project or a 60-day project, no matter what, you're going to have this quiet period in the end, and that just grows as you grow in the length of your project, which is why we recommend 30 days, um, among other reasons. So let's take a look at their updates. So as I said, this is like the built-in blog. Once someone uh, pledges uh, money to your project, they're automatically subscribed to this list, so it does get delivered to their inbox. So when they hit their goal very early on, they wrote a thank you note to those 58 people that helped them get there. And it was very simple. It just says thank you and each of their names. So thank you, Michelle, thank you, Lou, thank you, Daniel, and so on and so forth. Um, then right towards the end of their campaign, on the final day, I think, or final two days, they actually started sending out scans of the letters they'd been working on. So again, saying, guys, we did this together. It's going to happen. Here's some of the letters we've worked. And then, after their, their funding period had ended, um, the next day they sent out this handwritten, uh, a scan of a handwritten letter, which again was a thank you note. They did the same thing. It went on for four pages, because they had so many backers. Um, but the beginning is sort of a personal message from them, and then it says everyone's name. The thing is that's important about this, you can send public uh, project updates and private ones. So anyone that like, did something like this, they sent as a private one. Um, public ones were ones that were sharing the images and maybe uh, sharing some of the story that you can, so that your backers can share it with other people. Um, the other thing about project updates is they don't stop. <laughs> you know what's happening, right? Um, project updates don't stop when your funding period ends. They stop when your project is complete. So there's, they are still working on the letters. They haven't mailed them out yet. Um, of course, they want to let people know they're working on the rewards. So here they are burying some treasure. Um, not burying the baby, as someone <laughs> suggested. <laughs> um, and again, it, continuously they found a way, all the way up until when they finally did mail those letters out to make their story our story and bring us into it and let us come along for that ride. That's it.